miracles authenticated the apostolic ministry and message. That, that ministry of the apostles is finished. The foundation of the church has been laid. The New Testament is our authority. And the canon is closed. Now that doesn't mean that God can't do miracles today. He does what He wills. And we pray that, that He would, would do great things, wonderful things. We pray for healing. That He would heal someone. We pray that. I pray those kinds of prayers. I pray that, that He will intervene to, to change the circumstances of life. And pray diligently about that. We pray that. We pray, hopefully according to His will. And we look for an answer because prayer is effective. It's what we're, we are, it's the, the means that God has used, has given us to gain the blessings of the, that the Lord has for us. So he can do amazing things and does in fact amazing things in, in answering prayer. But we live in a different situation from the apostolic age. There are no apostles today giving fresh revelation. There are no prophets today giving fresh revelation. People are not being healed by an apostle's shadow falling on them as when Peter walked through the streets of Jerusalem. For all the, the, the talk about contemporary signs and wonders and modern day miracles, the phenomena of the first century are not occurring today. That doesn't mean, again, that miracles aren't happening. They are, and they are just as great. They are even greater today than they were in the past. Or as great, certainly. Because they are occurring through the preaching of the gospel and the teaching of the word of God. Donald Gray Barnhouse tells the story of a Christian who was asked no doubt by a skeptic, if he could turn water into wine. And he answered, he could do a miracle more wonderful than that. He told of an alcoholic who had kept his family in poverty and misery until he was led to Christ so that through the power of the gospel we turned whiskey into milk for his babies. Every conversion of a sinner into a saint is a miracle. That is power far greater than the power of raising the dead. Lazarus was raised from the dead. Tabitha was raised from the dead. Eutychus was raised from the dead, only to die again. But those who are converted to Christ are raised from spiritual death to spiritual life, which is life everlasting. Even though they die, they live and will be raised from the dead in the resurrection to come. And the life that they live now, the life that all of us as believers in Jesus Christ live now is life in Christ. It, it is new life. And, and we're being changed. That's the work of sanctification. We are being changed. Liars become truthful. The immoral, the, the immoral are changed into people of purity. The, the lazy are made industrious. Cold, dead, hard hearts are made alive and warm and loving toward all. That's the work of the gospel. That's the work of the Holy Spirit through the gospel. Peter called the gospel imperishable seed. It is what the Holy Spirit uses to produce the new birth. So, we tell others about Christ and the Spirit through that regenerates people so that they understand and believe. Through the gospel, the Spirit of God gives life. We don't give life, the Spirit gives life. We preach the gospel, He makes it effective. That is miraculous. And all of this is very encouraging. Our priestly service is really the sovereign work of God done in the power of the Spirit as Christ works through us. He makes feeble human words effective. He illuminates darkened minds. 